If you go to the book of 1 John, little John, chapter 4 and chapter 5, I want to talk about developing an overcoming faith. We live in a crazy world out there. We need this loosed upon our life more than ever. So we're going to begin with verse 4 of chapter 4, 1 John. You are of God. Say, I am of God. I am of God. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. That's good news. Chapter 5, verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Pray with me. Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. God, anoint me, deliver the word with freedom, boldness, and clarity. Lord, anoint our hearing to hear what the word of God is saying and help us to grab it in our spirit and rise up and live it out to the glory of God in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. The word of God sets us free. The word of God is the most powerful tool on the planet, the word of God. The word of God is the is the one thing the world does not like, it doesn't want, because the, the demon powers know what this word can do. If you take it out of the schools, he can create moral dysfunction. It's not the guns that are killing the people, it's people with demons in their hearts that are killing them. You see, this word, the devil's afraid of it. It all comes down to this book. Everything in life comes down to this book. You either agree with it or disagree with it. But this book is so simple. It actually, wait a minute. Is that Lloyd Bisnot? Yes. Lloyd Bisnot, your beautiful wife. Would you stand up? The missionaries all the way to Guyana. I didn't know you were here. God bless you. <laughs> Mighty man of God. In Guyana, where they go, demon powers will move into whole high schools. And they call them. They say the whole school, like 100 kids, are demonized. They go like in comas or they go, they bring him in. His ministry is demon extraction. Literally, it's just one of his ministries. He'll preach the word, but, and I've been with him in South Central America, cast out devils. Remember that man who brought his daughter up 57 miles on a boat? Remember that? Because she was demon possessed. And we got out there after the meeting, we prayed for her. She fell into a swoon. That's what they all do. Like, I'm gone. So you have to pray him back, right? We cast the devil out of that girl. You remember that? And uh, she went back healed and delivered in Jesus' name. So, yeah, we give the Lord praise for Brother Lloyd. We love you, Lord, Brother Lloyd. He lives in uh, Hamilton, Canada, on, and we thank God the Canadians finally let him out. <laughs> Jesus, some of this stuff is like crazy. But uh, where was I? Yeah, I'm talking about the world we live in. We live in a world, let me say this, we live in a crazy world because the demons know their time is short. They know that the time is coming when Jesus is showing up. When Jesus shows up, they're toast, all of them. And so we got to recognize the sign of the times. And there is a power that's against this book. It's called the spirit of antichrist. Antichrist means anti-anointing anti-Bible, anti-Christian, anti-anything that relates to this book. And the world represents the world culture, the world system. The world has its own ideas. I just looked at a, a little documentary about the John Webb, I think it's right, John Webb Telescope. James Webb, James Webb Telescope that goes way up there and it just, it amazes me what they can capture Whatever the Hubble captured, this is 10 times more powerful. And they're looking at all the things that are way up there in space and, and they're saying this took billions of years. The light that you're seeing was billions of years away. And all these professors and these men of learning, I'm sure they're very smart people, glibly talk about, which is I've heard this before, that the earth is 13 billion years old. I always think, who came up with that number? Because somebody did. I'm sorry. Somebody came up with a number. Let's see now. We need about a little bit of time. Let's, let's, try, let's try 13 billion. Actually, it's not even 13 billion. If you go look at the charts, it's like, it's 13.3. Oh, yeah. Let's, don't forget the decimal point. 
But the point being, they talk about how we were formed and what's in the stars is now in us and, and all this, and no mention of God whatsoever, godless communication, which is basically how the world operates in the secular world. There's no God. Well, let me just say something to you. If you don't believe there's a God, then you have no purpose for your life. Because without God, there's no purpose. Without God, what in the world are you living for? Your little life for 70, 80, 90 years, and then you're gone? And it amazes me the arrogance of human beings. That the little peanut brain, they can figure everything out in 60, 70, 80 years. And when they know that they're going to be gone. Gone! And here's this Bible that says that, that God made the heaven and the earth. And the heavens declare the glory of God. And it's just so sad that we live in a world which is so humanistic, so secularized, that we don't want to count God. And we want to push God out. And we're so crazy that if Roe versus Wade is turned over by the Supreme Court, we now want to mob the judge's home, almost say they're threatening their very life. Are you serious? And then some of the government doesn't even want to protect them? You are smoking some strong weed, brother. You know what that is? That's lawlessness. That's anarchy. And these very same people want to take the guns away. I'm sorry, it's not the guns that kill the people, it's the sin of people's heart. We've not taught, we have not taught morality in, our, in, the, in the people. We have not taught it. And so our kids are acting out because they've got no foundation, no guideline. Everyone is doing what is right in their own eyes. So all I want to do is I want to bring people, there's some brave pastors. There's a pastor out there in Portland, Oregon. How many know that's the left of the left? He's about 6'6", six, six, about 300 pounds. He's big. And he gets right in the midst of Antifa. Right in the midst of Black Lives Matter. They're the ones that maced him and all those people. Remember that they shut down the prayer meeting? They had a prayer meeting and they maced the kids. They tried to, and basically he went out up to the leader. He said, listen, we're believers here. We have a right to be able to stand and pray. What you're doing is wrong. And if no one's ever told you that, I'm telling you that. Kid back down, ran off. But the point is, we got to have a, uh, we got to be able to stand up to what's being done to the church and to Christians. We are not the overcome; we are the overcomers. We listen. We got to understand that this is the time, this is the life that we live, and we got to get a hold of this word like never before. That that God has given us the power to overcome through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we don't have to listen to the world's ways. Excuse me. The world is lost. First John 5.19 says the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. Demon powers infect rulers of nations. They affect CEOs. All these woke corporations that have no standard of the word of God. They have the new revelation of gender fluidity. They have the new revelation of all the whole thing about um, marriage. And want to teach it to our children. The whole thing about CRT. I can go on and on and on and on. And now they're, they're really cool. No, you're an absolute fool. Because when you go against the word of God, you come under the fool category because God says so. It says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Well, you got to recognize there's a God. You recognize that you're accountable to God. And one day you will stand before an almighty God and give a judgment for what did you do with your life. And believers have got to stand up and don't go woke yourself. I was with Brother Rodney. We were on a camping trip with 20 other people in the middle of the woods. Three weeks. I didn't say three weeks. I just went for two days. <laughs> and I like getting out of the woods. But we were sitting there talking around a big old campfire. And uh, he was just telling us, because of his circles, what's going on in the church world. And it is sad. But leaders of corporations, not of corporations, of denominations, are being taken in by the world. The WEF, the World Economic Forum. Leaders of whole denomination are getting into bed with the devil and are believing in the great reset that somehow they think that we are part of the solution for the world's problems. Let me tell you something. Jesus is the only solution for the world's problems. You cannot, 
And, and don't, no, no, they're going to say, listen to me, we've got this thing, it's called socialism, world socialism. That's what the Great Reset's all about. It sounds so good, but it's a trap. You see, people follow the works of the devil. When, you, when, you, <laughs> when they listen to what the, what the world has, has to say, let me tell you what, you don't need God, let the government be the God. We'll take care of you from the cradle to the grave. We'll take care of your education. We'll take care of your medical. In fact, you don't raise your children. We'll raise them. Let us do it all for you because we're the new God. How stupid can you be and still breathe? It's a come along. Because once you accept it, you turn into a hamster in a cage. They'll feel you carrots from every now and again. But if you decide, I want to do this and go over here, no, 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 we don't do that. We won't allow that. It's not in the agenda. So it's the devil's goal is to bring man under control. That's his whole goal from day one. He wants to subjugate humanity. He wants to bring men under. And he has many tools. He uses fear. One is fear of man. Fear of not being accepted. You've got to throw that fear and flush it. Well, you don't get it. You, I, I, you know, I'm in a place in my life, I don't really care what you think. I don't care what you say. I don't care what they say. Because if it goes against the word, it's the spirit of Antichrist. I'm sorry. I don't answer to you. Well, they might hurt you. Hurt me. Well, they might kill you. I'm ready to die. I will not allow the forces of hell to overcome this house of believers. You will not do it in Jesus' name. We're not, we're not bowing to you and your agenda because we know what the agenda is. It's control. It's domination. No fit in the box. Well, my box is the word of God. Oh, that doesn't count. That's irrelevant. No, you just showed me where you're from. So the Bible says that we are of God and have overcome them. Who's the them? Them who? Them who are the Antichrist. Those spirits that go against the word to go against God. Ultimately, it's against the devil. So we have to understand who the enemy is. The enemy is Satan and his demons. Our God is our savior and our liberator. Yes. Jesus came to set humans free. And so we need to understand that the word overcome is a big word. A big, big word. When Jesus gave the Seven churches in the book of Revelations, Revelations 2 and 3. He goes through each one and he says, everyone, he says, to him who overcomes. To him who overcomes. Meaning that the jury is not out yet whether you've overcome. In one of the churches he says, I'm praying that your name is not blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. And that you may overcome. You know what he's telling us? There are people that follow Jesus today. But they've given over their authority to the works of the world. They've tried to compromise to make the world like them. And they, and they, because they want to fit in with the culture. But if you go against Jesus, and you go against the word of God, you sell your soul to hell. And your name can be erased from the book of life. It's to him who overcomes. Well, let me say this to you. When you listen to these messages, you say, well, I better pay attention. Yeah, you better pay attention. You better pay attention. Because the devil is out to overcome you. But in the mind of God, you and I were created, because I'm of God, to overcome every satanic power. Does that make sense? So the devil overcomes us with all kinds of things. With the philosophies of men. He'll overcome you with bondages of sin of the flesh. You don't have doing things you don't want to do, but you keep doing them because you can't break free of them. And Jesus said, whoever sins is a slave of sin. He'll, he'll, he'll come at you with depression about your life. He'll have all kinds of things happen to you that take the joy and zest out of life. He will come at you with your job. He'll come at you with your marriage. He'll try and trash your marriage. He'll try and put you in a place where you're always in a less than, subjugated. And you really what the devil wants to do is shrink your world. 
He wants to make a minimal person of you. You're just a little person. You don't really matter that much to the things of the world. But really, where God shows up, he said, let me tell you what, I have come to do some things to overcome what the devil's tried to do. The devil always tries to shrink, put you in a little cage, like he did Paul and Silas. They were preaching, and watch the next, next thing the devil comes along, and he has them beaten. Next thing he has them put him in prison, in the inner prison. Why? Shut him up and make him go away. That is how the devil wants the Christians to be. Shut up and go away. We'll use the media. We'll come against you. We'll slam you. We'll call you a bigamist. We'll call you full of hatred. We'll call you, I mean, we'll, we'll, I don't care what we, use, what we use, but we will denigrate you. You have to understand what the enemy's purpose is. It's to overcome you. It's to get Christians to cower. It's to get Christians to back down. It's to get Christians to capitulate. Get Christians to compromise. Just be nice. Just be nice and fit in. Just fit in. Just fit in. And here's the sad part about it. So many churches are just doing that. They're fitting in. The goal is not to be nice. The goal is to be an overcomer. <laughs> Hallelujah. You understand that every battle is spiritual, is not natural. Whatever the natural is, is nothing. It's the spirit behind it. And the demon powers are out there to bring control on humanity. It's going on in this very nation. The only one that brings freedom to America is Jesus Christ. Amen. And one of the foundations of the word of God is everyone has a, has a right before God to worship the way they want to, speak their mind, be free to speak their voice. And while we have the voices out there, no! We got little freedom zones in campuses. Here's a 20 by 30. This freedom of speech is right here. Well, thank God in this state, they reversed that. They just passed a law that said the whole campus is a freedom of speech. Hallelujah. At least someone put the brains back in the organization. And so we got to understand the times we're in. And we got to push back. Jesus said this in John 16, 33. He says these words. In the world, you'll have tribulation, trials, distress, frustration, one translation says. But it says, be of good cheer. Be confident. Be courageous. Be undaunting. Meaning that you will not fear man. You won't bow down. And the word of God again goes to say, for I have overcome the world, Jesus says. I have deprived it of power to harm you and conquered it for you. Go back to, go back to Paul and Silas. They're in that prison. You know what? When you're walking with God, miracles will happen. Amen. They began to praise God and worship God in the midst of that prison, and God broke them free. God is always giving jailbreaks for people who are wanting to give him the praise. Amen. You know what happened to saying the, the first things the apostles fought was the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the scribes, the priests of the day, that they said, shut up, shut up, don't speak the voice. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. We set the agenda. It's our culture. We're going to make it happen. And Jesus said, no, change culture. Shift. Be the salt in the world. You're the ones completely different. Here's the world. Here's you. Completely different. One's bound for hell. One's bound for heaven. Never forget it. And so where they shut the apostles up, they all shut him up one time in Acts chapter 5. Jesus, listen to this. He's the head of the church. He hit one of the angels and said, break him out. The angel came down and said, go out and speak all the words of this life. And I love it. They spoke the words of life and more people got saved. You see, that's what God wants for you and I. If there's ever a time that we just stand up and recognize who we are, I'm a child of God. The Bible says whoever is born of God overcomes the world. Why? Because you carry the DNA of Almighty God. God's never been slapped down by any devil. The kind of God that you serve, he slaps the devil down. Do you understand that? Because why? He says, you've overcome them. Them who? The Antichrist. Spirit of Antichrist. And then he says, why? Because. That's a big word. Because. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Do you understand the power of God that lives in you? The creator of the earth lives in you. The power of the Holy Ghost lives in you. What is a pipsqueak demon compared to God? Nothing. They said, well, you know, the devils took over heaven. No, they didn't. There was, a, they were, it said, the, the, Satan himself rose up, took a third of the angels, 
And there was a war in heaven. Yeah, it lasted like a nanosecond. What was that God said? He came out of the earth like lightning. Shut down the earth. Let me tell you something. God has always had authority over the devil. He has always had authority. The devil is a creation of his that went AWOL. And I hate to say it, but human beings on the earth are made in the image of God. He created them, but they've gone AWOL. And what's happening in the earth today, the devil tries to shove people down with the doctrines of the world, with the media, just shove people down in confusion and bring about the darkness to the planet because his world is about subjugating you. Well, how am I going to get out of this? God's got this way out. His name is Jesus. You see, he said, you see, when Jesus, when Jesus showed up on the planet, he was the first human being that the devil could not mess with. Because every human being, from Adam until Jesus, he could always bind them. I don't care if they love God, even great as David was, he could go, well, commit sins with Bathsheba and then take out her husband. And he's a great man, but he still had his weaknesses. You had so many people that are falling short of what God had planned. But here comes Jesus, spotless sin of slam of God. Nothing he'd ever done was wrong. But the devil's always trying to get him. He said, hey, Jesus, after 40 day fast, if these stones, see these stones, you make them bread. Aren't you hungry? He peeled his flesh. He said, you're not getting me on that. I will not come to your captivity. Put it away. We can learn some things. Don't let food rule you. Eat to live. Don't live to eat. Okay, just that's, that's free on the side. And the second time he said, this is in Matthew 4, he said, hey, he said, Jesus, if you jump here off this pinnacle of this temple, you know, he'll send his angels to protect you. He said, don't tempt God. He said, don't try to make a mockery of the things of God. And really he appealed to his soul, the greatness of Jesus. But so lastly, he said, if Jesus, if here's the ultimate, if you just bow down and worship me, I will make you ruler over all the kingdoms of the world. Because they're mine, and I have mine to give. Jesus one time pushed him aside. He said, no, you'll not let me take the glory from God and give it to myself. Can I say this? Humanism at its root is worship of the human. You worship the creature, Romans, rather than the creator. That's, what it's, that's you, where you get in a big mess. But here's Jesus. He allowed himself. To go into captivity. He took on sin, the Bible said. He became sin. How many know this? When you become sin, you're separated from God. And the Bible said he was captured and placed in a place called hell. Hell is eternal prison where people are tormented day and night. Don't go to hell. Let me give you a clue. Do not go to hell. <laughs> Listen to me. Uh, and, 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 and let me tell you how you don't go to hell. You live a repentive life. You live close to Jesus. But if you pull away from Jesus, you can say you know God. You can say you love God. But so help me, he's not done with you. You better respect the devil. He's smart. But he's under our feet at the same time. Amen? But I watch people, they play with the things of the world. Christians play with the things of the world. I have watched preacher after preacher bite the dust. My personal friends have left the faith, become inclusionists. We're all making it. People that I once knew, spirit-filled, tongue-talking, faith people, they lost it. Do I pray for them? Yes. But let me tell you, we are living in dangerous times. You better get as close to Jesus as you can. You better not follow him from a distance because you could lose it. I want to warn you, you could lose it. This once saved, always saved is not found in the Bible. Well, I know Dr. So-and-so wrote it, but I read the book too. I kept saying, what about this verse? What about this verse? What about this verse? They excluded all the verses where the Bible says, no, you can, you can, I don't know why I'm going down this line. I didn't do it. You can lose your salvation. You can be saved one day and lost and go to hell. Do you understand me? Yes. You young people, you've been through this diverge. You take that fire that God gave you. Don't let anybody put it out. You let it burn in you and get brighter. And be the leader in the house of God. Run so far ahead, you make the adults look bad. 
I give you permission. Yes. Hallelujah. I haven't even turned my first page here. I've got notes. I'm, I'm trying to have some kind of order here. Praise the Lord. God help me. God help me. God help me. But I am just tired of Christians kowtowing to what the world gives out. I mean, where Jesus said, no, listen, you've got to understand the power that you have. That Jesus is the way out. When Jesus preached in, in Luke 4, 18, he said, I've come to proclaim liberty to, liberty to captors. Because human beings outside Jesus are captors, captors of, of Satan. I've come to proclaim liberty. And then the next verse, he says, the next line, he said, I've come to set captives free from the oppression and being downtrodden by the enemy. That's why the gospel is the best news in all the world. It kind of shines a light on what's going on. It says there's a devil and there are demons and there is hell. But there's a Jesus who's a savior that stood in the gap, is a mediator between God and man. And there's only one way to heaven, only one name given among men, whereby, whereby we may be saved. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He said, well, I'm trying to influence my friends. I've seen many friends that try to influence your friends. If you're going to influence your friends, never be ashamed of Jesus in their midst. Be sure you tell them that you love Jesus more than anything else and use his name, the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know in corporate America when I wasn't there, it would turn heads. People didn't like that name. Now, they, don't, they, they don't mind good Lord, the man upstairs, God. They don't even shrink at holy Buddha. But you mentioned the Lord Jesus Christ. It'll rattle people. Jesus Christ. Who said that? I said that. So you got to get a backbone in these last days. God will give it to you. He says you got to learn, this, to learn that your life is about overcoming. And you got to be able to say, you know what? I am not. Here's what you got to get in your heart. I am not tolerating any kind of bondage that Satan gives me. If you have lack of money, Satan is trying to curtail your effectiveness for the kingdom. Don't take, don't, don't, do not stand for it in Jesus' name. Rise up in faith and break it off your life. If you're fighting sickness and disease, I don't care if you got to confess the word till the day you die. You don't ever lie down to accept sickness. It's from hell. Do you understand that? You got to rise up. No, not to me, not to me. You're not doing that to me because I know my rights. If you're fighting sin, of any form, any kind of sin, do not allow it to just keep playing with your life. Say, no, I, this is being broken off me. And I'm telling you what, people always bring up smoking or drugs. There's something far worse. Gossiping, unforgiveness, and bitterness. Far more deadly. That'll bring cancer on you and God knows what else. Or always understand that these things are real, but Jesus will break you free. He has come to break you free of every single bondage. Somebody shout amen. amen. I tell you what, I get so excited when I preach this gospel. When I go around the world, I preach this gospel. What they need is Jesus. They don't need the united nothing. They need Jesus. Because I tell you what, they might give all the food and all the water and all that. And even missionaries will get involved with giving all the food and water. But if you don't give them Jesus, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. They need Jesus. He will bring about the miracle for them, a provision. It will really happen. Everybody said amen. amen. And so it comes down to this. Now we've got to come down to this matter of faith. He says, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Overcome means to gain victory, is to conquer, is to win, is to, is to prevail. That's what God has for your life. But this thing about God, that this faith thing is like a key that unlocks the door. It's the door that's shut. I can't overcome it, but my faith will unlock it. He said, this is the victory, even my faith. Now, we know this, that every human being is a spiritual being. If you're born again, the Holy Spirit lives within you. And that you have access to heaven. And that the human heart is designed by God. To have faith in the heart. You're created to have faith. You were made to have faith because you made the image of God. God is a faith God. That's how he operates. He made you to carry faith. The Bible says out of Romans 12, 3, he gives you everyone the measure of faith. So you have, a, you have been given faith. You couldn't be even saved without faith. Let me talk about faith a minute. Faith is the most important subject in the Bible. Because without faith, you cannot grasp anything else that God has for you. 
Every subject in the Bible is connected and attached to faith. You're saved by what? Faith. By grace through faith are you saved. You cannot please God without faith. Hebrews 11, 6. You got to understand this. We're called to walk by faith and not by sight. The whole gospel message in the New Testament is about the faith walk. It's a faith walk and a faith talk. And faith, the whole essence of faith, it's a spiritual thing. It's from your spirit. It's not out of your head. It is not intellectual. It is spiritual. And the Bible says that faith is like a substance. It says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hebrews 11, 1. It's the substance. Everybody say substance. It's a, it's, a, it's a heavenly materiality that you can develop. Now, the Bible says that we've been given a measure of faith. That means I can develop that faith. I can grow that faith. The Bible says the word is like a seed sowed in your heart. Well, what can a seed do? It can grow. I have a little garden in my backyard. I don't brag on it. Here's how I operate. I stick the plants or the seeds in the ground and walk away. And whatever survives, well, hallelujah. <laughs> About a month and a half, I'll come by and say, what's, what's going in here? i got to find it out. i got so much stuff growing. I'll pull out, hey, look here, pepper. How did I get here? <laughs> but, the, but the point is, whatever you plant will grow. Your faith, as God recognize this, can grow. It can grow. Say, my faith, my faith. can grow. Well, how do I grow my faith? I've got to pay attention to it. I've got to receive it. I've got to listen, receive, listen, receive, and then exercise it. I've got to listen, take it in, and exercise it. If you take in the word, your faith will automatically grow. And you've got to find out what the word has to say. So this book here is food for my spirit. It'll grow my faith. Now, when you really believe that, now here's the deal. If he says faith is the victory, faith is the key, then faith is a weapon. So I've got to grow my faith to step in the overcoming power that God has afforded me. You get that? You've got to have faith. Because without faith, if you have weak faith, you'll not be able to pull off what someone else has great faith. Well, how do they get great faith? The Bible talks about no faith, weak faith, little faith, great faith. It talks about it in the Bible. So there are different levels of faith. Now, if I know that everything I receive from heaven comes by faith, I need to grow my faith. You see the lights right here? They are bearing, they, they are emanating electrical current that comes all the way from God knows where. Plant Vogel, perhaps. From a long, long way away, there's a plant that's generating power. And the power is transmitted through these electrical lines right to us, so we have the lights. Faith is like the wire. The wire, the of, from heaven comes to you. But the more you need, the thicker the wire needs to be. Does that make sense? So you've got to develop this faith. Now watch this. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith will come as you, uh, as you assimilate the word and take it in. Your faith will grow. But here's the people, here's, here's what people don't realize. If faith can come, faith can go. You can, you can be listening to the word and get in the, and get in the fellowship of, of God's people and your faith will grow and grow. But if you step away, you step away from the word, that same faith you once had will go out the window. And your faith can then diminish. I know what that's like. I know exactly what that's like. One time I had a job. It was really cool. I traveled all over the country and different states and Hawaii. It was great. I said, well, I want to go to Hawaii. You go to Hawaii to work. Well, that's totally me. But the problem was I was always moving and I was never in church. You know what I said to myself? I rationalized it and said, well, uh, back then it was cassettes. I listened to cassettes. I listened to people preaching, and I'll be good. I'll be good. I sensed it in my spirit, Pastor Willie, my faith dropping. Every month it would just drop. I could just feel it. I said, wait a minute. It was like a warning. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I did? I walked into the, to my office. I was making good money. I, joined, I said, I resign. Why are you resigning? I must be in the house and fellowship of God's saints. I just resigned. I just resigned. I said, nope, I got to be the people of, people of God. But you what? You've got to understand your faith can go up or down based on the word you're, you're receiving. So your spirit man is the one that's growing this faith. And your faith level determines the strength of your power to overcome. Now, let me tell you about faith. Faith does not grow overnight. You got to feed it and exercise it. You've got to grow it. 
So if you are in faith, here's what people do. They make a big mistake. They reach for a very high rung that is beyond their faith. Like to come here and say, I believe in God for this, whatever it is. Maybe a million, three million dollar house. Well, uh, where are you living now? You won't, you cannot go that high. Can just be kind to yourself. Can I just say this? Uh, can I just be really real? We're all learning. No one is a faith giant. We haven't all arrived. I mean, you got to just relax. Understand, I am learning how to grow my faith and learning how to operate in it. Amen. And I will make mistakes along the way. I know I have. I have my retinue of mistakes. When I got into business, I heard the faith message. I took off in the business. I went, wow, the business grew. I had 16 people, I had this and that, and went broke. I went to God, God, what happened? I had faith. He said, son, come here. <laughs> After fasting for three days, you got to listen to what I tell you to do. Oh, listen, listen, listen. Oh, listen, that was another element. Forgot about the listening part. You got to listen, and then you apply your faith. Does that make sense? And so I had to learn that. So you know what? Don't knock people. I never discourage people, but they go, I don't believe in God for whatever. I just smile. I said, well, they'll learn. <laughs> you know, and when they hit the mountain, slide down. I'm there to help make up. That's okay, honey. That's okay. Let me give you some Epsom salts. Get your breath back. Just, you're going to learn. But you learn. But you will develop your faith. You will grow your faith if you stay exercising it. Does that make sense? So really, what God wants out of you is a spirit of faith, which is found in 2 Corinthians 4.13. It says, we having the same spirit of faith. I love that word. He's talking about attitude. When you look at life, and life will give you, I mean slaps. The devil will try to slap you down on different things. Things happen. Bad things happen to good people. We get trials. We get things thrown at us. But God said, you don't have to come under it. You do not have to come under it. You can rise above it. You can overcome it. If you'll get a hold of what? Faith. And I found out that the spirit of faith is an attitude. It's an attitude, yes, I can. It's an attitude that I have, I have a positive heart in my life that says, God, you are for me and not against me. And that, God, you're well able to do that which I've committed to you in Jesus' mighty name. I've got faith for that. Listen, believe God. Believe God for God's best. Yes. Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do super abundantly by what we can ask or think. You ladies, you men, believe God for the super abundance. Never settle for cheaper. Yes. Don't compromise your faith. Yes. Well, I've been waiting for this guy for so long, and here's Brother Doodad. <laughs> well... Brother Dew and Dad, I guess is what I got to live with. I guess the best I've seen. Well, I guess. Now, don't capitulate. Amen. You hang out for God's best. Hallelujah. Put your faith. You can overcome in Jesus' name. Amen. I tell you what, you got to be, you got to have this thing. I'm not coming under what the devil gives out. I refuse to let the devil rule my life. And we've got to do that even with our own lives. There's always a pushback. As leader of this church, I get pushback from the community, from other church pastors. They'll come at me now, now, like with the whole COVID thing. Now, why are you open? You should be closed. It's the safe thing. Wearing three masks and two shields. <laughs> with a six-foot stick. Don't get closer. You're getting too close. And, and, and so I would say, no, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. In fact, you know what? I want to go the other way uh, because I believe we should meet. And I believe that God's faith in us can push this thing over and we all can overcome the COVID thing. That's what I told. Especially when I know things I shouldn't know. And one of the top guys at CDC in this city, he's meeting with Ted and I, and, he's, and he says, I'm the guy that makes up the numbers. I can tell you about the numbers. He said, let me tell you something. I'm about ready to leave it because he said, we put stuff together that's not legit. He said it right there, but I won't mention his name. So let's just let that slide. 
But the point is this. I said, you know what? Just for that devil, we are going to overcome. And we start having services every day but Saturday, week after week after week. Why? Well, that's unsafe. Well, it's just depending on which angle you take it. I'm taking it as you being in the house, you get minister to the word of God. If you want to stay away, that's between you. I don't decry that. That's fine. But according to your faith, be it unto you. But my says faith says I can be here. And you know what? We survived, didn't lose anybody. Never lost anybody. But I remember we had this whole thing about the fireworks. And uh, I, I just, I, when I feel they push back against me, I can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, no one else is doing that, something goes off on me. <laughs> what? He said, what? And so they said, no one in Atlanta is doing fireworks. Well, I went to the mayor's office, and I talked to him. I said, listen, people have been cooped up for a year and a half, thinking they're now, and they're so coveted out. They want a little bit of fun. And would you allow me to put a giant firework thing here along with a big stage and just do it? And it could be our property. We'll accept full responsibility. It's not on you. So they came back days later. After a lot of deliberation, Pastor Hafton, we have decided we'll let you do it. I said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, what we did was I ordered a truckload of fireworks. We spent a truckload. We set it back on our property, and we came in to blow that stuff up. I mean, it was blowing up for Jesus. The things were going up. They told me that first one, it was better than the Roswell fireworks. We had thousands. We had people, this place was packed. We had thousands on the sweet apple field. We had thousands sitting around chairs all around this place. And we also preached the gospel, but we overcame in Jesus' mighty name. We don't, you know, we just got to push back, push back, push back. We constantly are pushing back. In the no woke society we have, we're trying to get street reaching and the woke corporation. Well, now what's this? I said, we teach faith-based values to children for one hour. Well, I mean, that goes against a pluralistic stance on our, on our, upon the company. Wah, 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 wah. I said, well, listen, you can be pluralistic. Get the, get the Hindus one day, get the Buddhists, the Buddhists the next, and get the Muslims and get us. One person bought that. They said, you know what? You're right. I guess I could. But it's the truth. We have to go to the corporate heads, and, and they're giving us talks. But what we do, we go around the managers. We go to the CEOs. And CEOs, pre, you know, they're, they're up there and they go, you know what, we'll give you permission. We've gone around them, had to go down, back to the manager and said, your CEO says we can do it. And so we have to understand that we, we, you know, we're, we're constantly dealing with the, no, you can't, no, you can't, you can't stop it. But guess what? We, we, we just made about our mind. We're going to do it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So you got to understand the pushback's got to be from the believer. You got to say, no, I'm an overcomer. I'm not an overcome. I'm an overcomer because I have faith and my faith is growing. And I have a, a spirit of faith, a spirit of optimism that says we have a can do. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. <laughs> Who gave himself for me? Listen to me. You got to get this attitude. And the faith of that same verse says, as, I've, as, as was written, as we have believed, therefore we spoke. Therefore, we also, as we believe, we therefore also speak. And so we need to be like Caleb. Caleb in, in Genesis chapter, th I mean, uh, Numbers 13, 30 said this. When all the children said, we're not able, we're not able. You know what he said? He said, no, let me just say this. We are able to overcome and take possession. We are able to overcome. And what God wants to hear from you is your faith. Let your mouth open up and begin to declare, I'm an overcomer. I'm born of God. I'm overcoming in my job, overcoming in my body. My body, you got to line up. I'm talking to you. You cannot stay sick. You Listen to me. I'm overcoming in sins in my life. I will not allow sin to rule my life. You've got to use your faith. Said my faith. Now, no one can stop you having faith other than you. Your faith growth is on you, not on me. But if you're smart, you make it your number one priority. I've got to get this word in here. When I get this word in here and I exercise it, I can strap the devil back and I can walk in power. And let me explain something. I'm at a place right now in my life. You do this over the years. It's a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. I'm not confused. I know exactly where I am. I know what God's saying to me. I have peace in my heart. 
And when things come against me, and they do, I don't spend weeks and months going to a pity party, going into the bitter chamber. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, I think about how mean they are. I'm going to get them. You don't do that. Why you take me weeks, maybe a month to get over? I can get over in an hour. You just get, that's it. Water off a duck's back. Water off a duck's back. But you didn't get it overnight. It came through developing your faith. You develop your faith. You develop your faith. You develop your faith. And you come into the lifestyle of an overcomer. Well, you overcome in every area of your life. As a matter of fact, you will never accept defeat. You make up your mind when I go to God and I'm standing, I will stand until Jesus shows up and brings me the answer. That's an overcoming life. You can't be put in a box. Devil, you can try and minimize me, but I refuse to be minimized. Because I got the great maximizer inside of me and he wants to make my life great, influential, and big for him. He wants to do this for every single one of you. Don't allow the devil to shrink your life. Don't allow the devil to have, make you have small plans. You know what the church is about? The church is about getting the dream in you released. Because everyone has a dream. And if you'll not be overcome, you can be the overcomer. I've got one last verse and we'll go. Ooh, later this ever been. There's a scripture found in, he, in Matthew 13. I believe it's verse 30. Or 31. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in the field. And then he says, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree. So the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. You know what I love about this scripture? This is what I'm going to close with. You can overcome for yourself. And after a while, it begins to grow in you. Yes. Amen. But that's not the end result. The end result is you get your faith so strong that you stand to become a tree that others can come and nest and get coverage and get blessed through your faith. Hallelujah! So this church is about you becoming a great tree for God. That you grow your life to feed other people the truth of the word. And you can begin by saying you are born to overcome. You are born to take charge. That is in your DNA. And that's why anything less rubs wrong on the inside of you. So here it is. Feed your faith. Feed it. Exercise it. Grow it. You young people on the front row, if you get this early, it can affect everything in your life. Amen? So, Lord, let's pray. Father, I thank you today.